one. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use this. Praise the Lord. Amen. The ultimate questions of Jesus. The ultimate questions of Jesus. Um, you know, if you turn with me in your Bibles tonight to Matthew 16, 13, and 15, we're going to find two questions of Jesus Christ that he asked. And the first of those questions was, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And then he asked his disciples, but who do you say that I am? Now tonight, we're going to look at these two questions that Jesus asked, and we're going to answer them from three perspectives. First, we're going to answer it by what the non-Christian world religions say about Jesus Christ. Second, we're going to answer it by what cults say about Jesus Christ. And third, we're going to answer what the Bible and the Christian community has to say about Jesus Christ. And after we've answered these two questions of Christ, I'm going to ask you one more question. And that's a lot more personal. It's got to do with your individual relationship with God, not necessarily on the level of salvation, but on if you're living a life as a Christian, as a slave or as a son. Because Jesus said, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Praise the Lord. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, God, that you're such a good God and we love you. You're our Father and we ask that the Holy Spirit help us here tonight in Jesus' name. We lift our brother Jim one more time before your throne of grace. Lord, may you touch Jim Galbert in, G Galbert in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, we pray that Christ be glorified, Lord, in this gathering here today. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would come with your anointing and grace in Jesus' name. Lord, touch every heart. Lord, I fully expect, Lord, you to minister to every person, Lord, through this message and through this time together. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. You know, the first perspective, what do non-Christian world religions say about Jesus is important. It's important because we know who the competition is and what they have to say about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you know there's a battle going on for the souls and the minds of men? Can anyone say amen? amen. Islam after Christianity, is the second largest world religion on the earth today. Muslims believe Jesus was a true prophet sent by God, but superseded by Muhammad. The Quran states he has not fathered anyone of God, nor has he fathered, and there is nothing comparable to him. The Quran says... It is not befitting to the majesty of God that he should beget a son. Glory be to him. When he determines a matter, he only says it, be, and it is. Now, the problem that we have with that, obviously, is that Islam teaches that God has not brought forth a divine son. And as Christians, we have an issue with that. You see, we have, a, we have an issue with that. Muslims reject both the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. According to the Quran, Jesus escaped the crucifixion and ascended directly to heaven. Well, if Jesus skipped the cross, we don't have any redemption, you see. So we believe that Jesus is our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Buddhism teaches that Jesus was a wise and enlightened man who taught similar things to the Buddha. Okay. The first tenet of their tenets of faith says that Buddha is our only master. Their third tenet is, we do not believe that this world is created or ruled by a god. Now, Christianity is in direct opposition to those statements of belief. You see, because we do believe that for us, 
1 Corinthians 8 and 6, there's only one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. And in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So as Christians, we believe that God created and there's a mighty God over this universe. Amen. And, he, and Jesus is our Lord. Now, Hinduism, another world religion, believes that Jesus was an incarnation of God akin to Krishna or a wise man. Okay. So, Hinduism believes that in the afterlife, if karma is unresolved, meaning if you've done enough good to redeem yourself in this life, that the soul is born into a new body, if karma is resolved, it attains moksha or liberation. Now, as believers, we have an issue with that. You see, because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 that it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Once to die. So, reincarnation and resurrection are incompatible. Can someone say amen? amen. You see, they, they don't fit. Let's look at another perspective, the perspective of, of cults. What do cults say about Jesus? Well, first, what is a cult? Well, Webster's Dictionary says a cult is a religion regarded as unorthodox or spurious. What, what does that mean, unorthodox or spurious? You know, we typically don't go around, hi, how are you doing? Oh, I feel unorthodox today. You know, we, you know, we, we, we typically don't use these, these words. What does it mean, unorthodox, you know? Well, it means that it's outside of the main body of belief that most Christians hold to as true. So a cult deviates away from the main truth that's found in the scriptures, and they become weird. That is one of the definitions. They become strange and weird. Okay, now let's look at Scientology. Scientology is a, is a growing cult in America today. There's several uh, celebrities that have embraced and confessed Scientology. What is it? Scientology includes in its belief that they believe in God, but listen to this, but offers no details or doctrine about God. God is therefore the eighth dynamic, which is also known as infinity. Sounds like a car. Uh, <laughs> Scientologists who progress to the eighth dynamic come to their own conclusions regarding the supreme being. So we have issue with that as Christians, don't we, see? Because God has revealed himself, and we don't have to come to our own conclusions. God's already made himself known to us. Praise the Lord. Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses disagree with the mainstream of Christian belief that Jesus was fully God and fully man. Witnesses teach that Jesus was not God, but rather God's first creation. They also believe that Jesus Christ was Michael the archangel before, and that after, after he died and that went back to heaven, he became arch the archangel again. Well, the Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ has a present-day ministry right now. Hebrews chapter 4, 14 through 6, that he is our high priest. We can go to him, you see, and he's alive. He ever lives to make intercession for those that come unto God. He is able to save to the uttermost. He's our Savior today. He's not an angel. Can you say amen? And he's seated at God's right hand, Mark 16 and 19. Jehovah Witnesses deny the existence of hell. Remember as we expose cults and world religions that the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, didn't come into the world to condemn the world but to save the world. You see, and he loves every person. Can you say amen? You see, these people are not our enemies, you see, but the devils behind their teaching are our enemies, and they seek to enslave people to deception and bondage. Mormonism. Mormonism are Latter-day Saints. The founder of Mormonism, Joseph Smith, had a vision, and, that, and in that vision they believe that that vision represented the beginning of the revelation of God in our day. Now we have a problem with that as Christians. You see, because we believe that the authoritative word of God is right here in this book. 
you see. And God still speaks today, even prophetically, but nothing that a man can say that I can say or some preacher says can equal this book ever. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You see, so they created another book called the Book of Mormon, you see. And so we have a problem with that, all right? Now, a third